Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we have a very exciting mission. The Kerbals at the Research and Development Centre uh, have made a lot of discoveries lately to suggest that life evolves uh, where there is liquid water found. Now, where can we find liquid water around the Kerbal system? Uh, for those of you that have answered lathe, yes, lathe is correct. That's where we're going today, but we are doing a mission with a little bit of a twist. Not only do we need to get to lathe, land and return to Kerbin, we also want to send a little ocean dive vessel that can uh, take us down to the bottom of the sea floor of lathe, take some surface samples and return up to the surface. So uh, yes, a very exciting mission we are launching here now, of course. Seeing as this mission is the first for all Kerbal kind, we have of course got Burberry Kerman loaded up into this vessel. As we pass into the upper atmosphere, we'll drop those next two uh, tanks there. We have got these mammoth cores set up in an asparagus staged uh, kind of way like we have here in the past. As we get higher with this rocket, our thrust to weight ratio drops quite considerably because we have a lot of weight in the top of this vessel. You can see there uh, at the top we have those four outside cores with the uh, vector engines. So we're aiming here to circularize our orbit at around 80 kilometers or near two. Uh, so we'll slowly just uh, keep our thrust on here as we climb up, ditching those fairings there that are set up in a clamshell way, uh, set with three segments. Underneath those fairings, you can now see a second little launcher, which is going to be used to get back off lathe, uh, if we can possibly do it. The last two side tanks there are now empty, we'll ditch those. And we now have uh, our single core here. This uh, this mammoth core stage will get us to orbit and also uh, probably half our way to our encounter with Jewel. Just getting close to orbital velocity here now and you'll see as I reach the apoapsis, I turn the, uh, the thrust right down just so we're skimming that apoapsis. Uh, that lets us circularize really beautifully. Uh, you want to keep the time to apoapsis basically right down at zero or as close to zero as you can as you're circularizing. So indeed we did select a launch window that was uh, appropriate so that we could intercept nice and efficiently with Jewel. We're just setting up our transfer here now uh, using those maneuver nodes to uh, uh, give us the best opportunity to encounter Jewel. If you want to get to Jewel without gravity assists, it takes almost 2000 meters per second to do it uh, at your most efficient window. Your phase angle needs to be around the 96 sort of area and you can see that in our uh, Kerbal Engineer readout there in the bottom right. So yes there isn't as much Delta V in this stage as you would think given that we're running a huge big mammoth core there but as I said the top is very heavy. So out of fuel there now we'll ditch that last core stage we'll get the rest of the way to uh, lathe here just on this upper stage here with the vector engines. So the thrust to weight ratio of this stage is just monstrous it's actually much larger than it needs to be just bringing that thrust right down as we reach our encounter there with Jewel. Uh, that's actually a nice transfer window we have set up there. We'll do a mid-course correction. We actually have plenty of Delta V in this stage, and the reason for that is because we actually want to have uh, quite a bit of fuel remaining in these tanks when we land on lay. That's so that we can uh, sit in the water vertically. We want our vessel to sit upright so that we can run our experiments and return. So setting up our mid-course correction here, our maneuver node uh, is going to give us a good estimate here on how we can get all the way to Joule nice and closely, and we want to do a gravity assist at Tylo. Of course, being able to do a gravity assist at Tylo will mean that we can drop into a Joule orbit entirely without spending any more fuel at all. So just doing that small burn there, and uh, yes, then we can time warp all the way up to Joule's sphere of influence. So again, as we get closer to our maneuvers, we can do finer corrections. So as we get into the sphere of influence here, just adjusting our uh, our trajectory just a little to uh, set up that gravity assist with Tylo in a way that's going to have us coming out at the correct inclination to match up as close as possible there with lathe. Now a very handy trick if you want to just fine tune your maneuver is to use your mouse wheel when you're hovered over each of those maneuver node uh, markers. Now this uh, was a very good gravity assist here from Tolo. This is going to get us right down with almost uh, zero inclination in relation to lathe and uh, also drops our orbit right down basically so that we only need to make a very small adjustment to do our lathe encounter. As we fall in towards Jewel and Tylo here, Burberry can reflect on how many damn times he's been at this Jewel system now. He's basically here almost every second week. 
He returned the other week from a holiday around Tylo, of course, when he had his sunbed up here. If you want to check out that episode, here is a link here. So here I'm setting up an interesting double manoeuvre. We of course want to make sure that we drop our periapsis to meet up there with Lathe's orbit, but beforehand we want to just uh, elongate our orbit there, raise that periapsis just a little so that as we come around we're going to meet up with Lathe at the exact right time. So by doing this double manoeuvre you can essentially simulate exactly what's going to happen after both of those burns have been completed. So a small prograde burn here of 23 meters per second just to get our timing right. Uh, this is going to mean when we now do our retrograde burn at our apoapsis, uh, we're basically going to meet up exactly with lathe, so this is awesome. This is a slightly larger burn at almost 200 meters per second, dropping that right down there. We still have almost half the fuel remaining in these tanks, so uh, yes, this is not a problem. We are going to get down to lathe very easily. We can actually use the aero braking method to reduce most of our velocity here without having any heating problems at all, actually. The atmosphere around lathe is quite thin, but it still lets us brake quite easily. So Lathe being the innermost of the five satellites of Joule uh, is mostly covered of course in the ocean seas. A few little rocky islands but we are not heading to those today. Lathe is tidally locked to Joule which means that synchronous orbits around a Lathe are not possible. They lie outside of the sphere of influence. As we fall into lathe here, we can start planning our uh, retrograde burn here just to drop into a lathe orbit. We just need to do a small burn here. Uh, we're just uh, we're just coming in a little fast to do an aero braking maneuver. Uh, almost 3,000 meters per second will actually destroy some of our parts here, so we'll uh, we'll just do a small burn to drop into that orbit. And then just a tiny little burn at our apoapsis to drop that periapsis down into the atmosphere of Lathe. We'll do our first aero braking pass. Around 45 kilometers from the surface seems to be a good area here to do an aero brake. It means we're not going to generate too much heat. We're going to slowly be able to reduce our velocity through several passes while the Kerbal's on board. Well, the Kerbal on board, I should say. There's only Burberry. Uh, while Burberry does some uh, nice scientific analysis to send back to the Kerbal Space Center about some of the atmospheric properties of lathe. Of course this sort of analysis can be done in real life as well if we are able to detect certain uh, certain things in the atmosphere we can almost make the assumption that perhaps certain processes might be happening on the planet. Perhaps Burberry here may find some signs that life may have existed or still exists on the planet just by picking up certain properties here of the atmosphere. So passing through the atmosphere for the third time here, each pass knocks a few hundred meters per second uh, off our velocity around lathe. And as soon as we get this uh, down around 2000 meters per second, uh, we're probably fairly safe to come in and do our final re-entry. Uh, what we do want to do though is come down uh, on the sunny side of the planet. So I just want to do a slight adjustment here, uh, a very small burn just to make sure that we're going to come down on the side of the planet that's going to be a little more entertaining. There's nothing worse than coming down in the dark and filming all that. A small burn at our periapsis there of 162 meters per second is going to bring us down there over the sunny side of Lathe just to drop down nicely, hopefully, into the ocean there. We wanted to leave probably about, uh, about this much fuel in our tanks, otherwise our vessel is uh, going to be too high in the water. And you'll see what I mean here shortly. So we're doing our final pass here at around uh, 1900 meters per second, just through the top of the atmosphere of Lathe at around 42 kilometers from the surface. Uh, seems to be a good area to do this. Uh, and as, uh, as we reduce our velocity, the heating gets less and less of a problem. Finally, of course, dropping down in towards the ocean. We have four drogue shoots set to the outside arms there. We have four normal shoots as well. A slight burst there from the vector engines, just in panic, I looked like I was coming down a little too fast. And a very small power descent there with those vector engines. A nice gentle touch down there on the ocean surface of Lathe. Ah, Burberry there wiping the sweat off his face. We can now finally decouple the fairing there from that central area and underneath here you will see uh, we have our little diving bell which is going to come in handy here in a second. Before that we're going to grab some science readings from those science junior units and we'll just transfer Burberry into that diving bell as well. 
Lathe really is one of the most awesome places to visit in the entire Kerbal system. It is definitely my favourite little body to land on. Just beautiful there as we zoom in from orbit, uh, with Jewel there in the background. So with Burberry loaded into our diving bell, we'll decouple that there, and we're going to, uh, well, we're a bit stuck on the edge there. Now we'll just roll this over. Come on, you were supposed to flawlessly fall into the ocean. Wiggling around, and there we go. Off it goes there into the ocean. Now the landing legs that we have here are uh, purely to absorb the impact at the bottom of the ocean floor because by the time we actually get to the bottom, uh, we're going to be moving quite quickly. When I tried this the first time, I hit the ground at 15 meters per second. So yes, uh, all the landing legs are designed to explode. Sinking down, about to touch the surface. And boom, there go the landing legs, but the rest of our diving bell has survived quite nicely. We're just going to pick up all that sweet science so that we can return it to the surface. Now in order to make a vessel that would actually sink like this one does, I had to put three vector engines stacked on top of each other at the bottom of this thing and I've got them turned upside down so they look kind of diving bell-ish. Uh, We'll just pick up that last EVA report and surface sample to return into our capsule. We've already picked up all the scientific instruments from our little storage bay there. And all we'll do here is decouple that heat shield which was just adding some extra weight to this thing and off we go to the surface. Now one little mistake I did make here as I ascended the first time was uh, I came rocketing straight up right underneath our, uh, our parent vessel and just smashed into it and exploded. So yes, uh, what we can do here is just roll our vessel here as long as you have a little bit of battery left. Roll our vessel there and it's just going to help us change our, uh, our position there in relation to the surface so that we don't come up straight underneath. <laughs> Rocketing out of the ocean there at over 10 meters per second for another splashdown. So we just need to pop Burberry out of the vessel, collect all the science from the command pod there and go and hop up onto our parent vessel here. Now you'll see the problem that, uh, that I was concerned about. I just didn't quite have enough fuel left in this thing. I had designed it so that cupola module would actually be sunk down partially in the water. Luckily though, it was only just low enough for Burberry to be able to actually climb up on here, which was great. So now all of our science has been loaded into that cupola module. What we can do though is we can transfer Burberry up into the lander can and what we can actually do now is poke the camera inside that little fairing, right click that experiment storage unit and we can collect all science from the entire vessel. That includes our science junior units and everything in that cupola module. So off we launch in our lather scent vehicle leaving our ocean base there this vessel has two outside tanks that are fueling into that central core. You can see there the fuel rapidly draining out of those outside tanks. As soon as they are empty, we are going to decouple those there for an instant explosion as they ram back into each other behind our vessel. Our apoapsis there above 50 kilometers, we can cut those engines. Just punching our way out of the atmosphere at over 1000 meters per second. As soon as we pass 40 kilometers, we can turf those fairings. We'll just wait here until we pass that 50 kilometer mark. That means we are out of the atmosphere. Time is of the essence. We need to hop out of our little lander can here. We need to collect the science from our storage unit and we need to hop on board our little seat here at the top for our return back to uh, back to Kerbin. We needed to rush there because we are still suborbital. If we didn't get back into that seat, we would have uh, yes perished in a blaze of glory. This final stage powered by one single spark engine with the three full Oscar B fuel tanks. We need to burn around another thousand meters per second to get into orbit of Lathe. And then we need to eject from Lathe of course to get back to Kerb and that's going to take us at least another thousand odd Delta V. This has just enough to get us all the way back. Setting up that manoeuvre node there, and you can see there the Delta V required for this is just under 1000 meters per second. We'll time warp around here and we'll just kick off that burn there. It's important, of course, that you eject from lathe when lathe is at the uh, the best position uh, in Joule's orbit because you want to be ejecting out in a retrograde direction from Joule. So you want to uh, not only have lathe heading in a retrograde direction around Joule, you also want to be ejecting out of lathe in a prograde direction as well. This allows us, of course, to take the full advantage of the O-Birth effect from Joule and Lathe as we exit out. And yes, this gives us a very efficient burn, only 1,000 meters per second to get all the way back to Kerbin. 
Another very beautiful shot there as Jewel and Lathe fall away behind us. And now heading on our way back to Kerbin, we can do a very small correction here to make sure that we meet up with Kerbin uh, at the exact right point to intercept with it on our first pass. We're not going to need to do another orbit or anything like that this time. Just needed there to do a slight retrograde and radial adjustment there at the same time to uh, basically come in so that we're hitting the atmosphere there of Kerbin. So just doing our small 188 meters per second burn here uh, to get that intercept correct. There we go, that's close enough there for the moment. We will do a mid-course correction as we're getting in closer to Kerbin. Uh, just to fine tune this, we wanna basically hit the atmosphere uh, on the light side of the planet so that we're at least coming in in a nice visible way so that you can all see the landing. This does mean, sadly, that we're coming in in a retrograde direction, meaning we have just a little more velocity to wipe off as we pass through Kerbin's atmosphere. It's okay though, it's okay, because Burberry is more than capable of withstanding the massive G-forces involved in such a manoeuvre. I can't think of any Kerbal more qualified to do such a thing, actually. Just plummeting in towards Kerbin there now, and uh, yes, Burberry very safe, tucked up there behind that heat shield. That's the great thing about Burberry, you know, there is no job too difficult, no task too extreme for Burberry. Looking quite happy about this exhilarating ride, actually. Screaming through the atmosphere there at over 4,800 meters per second. You can see the heat shield there was getting quite a lot of heat. We do have more than enough ablator for the entry of this vehicle. It does decelerate extremely quickly. You can see there it's already basically out of the main part of the re-entry. And now Burberry is just left to fall nice and slowly back towards the surface. Uh, and uh, yes, you'll notice here I do have a uh, small inline reaction wheel. And that is going to give us enough power to actually stay upright even after we pull these chutes. The chutes in this case actually pointing out backwards, which is a little bit of an odd way of having the parachutes, but it was a nice way to actually have it uh, on this particular vessel. So down Burberry comes here now. So this was a very successful trip and I hadn't actually uh, pulled a lot of those science readings from the lathe ocean there before. Uh, so quite useful from a career point of view. And splash down there at less than five meters per second so we could quite happily keep that uh, heat shield attached. With all of those science readings returned, that gives us another 1,700 science points to add to my grand total now uh, of well over 33,000 in science points. So when the new expansion pack comes along, I'm going to have more than enough science to actually unlock all of that stuff in one go. Of course, Burberry was a level 5 pilot before we even left, so he gains nothing extra for me. But uh, yes, uh, he is our most decorated pilot. So I would like to thank you all for watching. Again, I am going to be drawing a random comment from the comment thread below uh, to win a flag at the Minmus base. Uh, for those of you that don't know about the Minmus base, uh, check out this episode here. I do actually have a few flags to drop here. I'm not going to do that today because I'm still waiting on a few. I'm also still going to be doing that Q&A episode, so uh, any questions that you do have for me for a QA, and a I will uh, address those in the Q&A, uh, provided that I can fit everything in one episode. And yes, thank you all for watching. Please do take a second, give this video a thumbs up. All of your support helps a huge, huge amount. If you have any questions for me, of course, whack them in the comments. Uh, thanks for all of you awesome subscribers, and for those that haven't yet, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game for some extra little tidbits and uh, just general comments about what I'm doing in the week. And uh, yes, we'll see you all in the next video. Uh, we want to keep pointing slightly up so that we're not dropping too fast. Ditching that skipper engine stage there now, and we can now engage all of our terrier engines at the same time there. These are also set up in an asparagus stage kind of way. Oh, good God, that was close. Just a few hundred meters per second here to wipe off.